When you're building .NET applications, you often have to manage your NuGet dependencies across a wide range of projects. And this can be pretty cumbersome, trying to update all the different version numbers and keep them in line. And what if you have packages that are being shared or are exactly the same across all of your projects? We got to add them to everywhere. What if I told you that there was an easier way to do this? And today I'm going to show you how to simplify your entire NuGet package management system and all of your applications with .NET. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James, and today we're back talking about a little bit of NuGet. That's right. It's a topic I don't talk about too much here, but I do love NuGet because it helps us as .NET developers find amazing packages from Microsoft and from the community and from amazing companies that are enabling us to build our applications faster. Now, NuGet uh, enables you to download packages. You can manage them. You can update them. You can pin them to different version numbers. And as, of course, even .NET updates, there's new packages that are being released as well. Now, one thing for me, though, is that I sort of hate having to manually update all of my packages all the time, and additionally across a lot of different projects. Well, there's a new feature, in fact, a feature that's been in NuGet and .NET since .NET 6, that's right, and some new features in .NET 7 for central package management. This feature enables you to create a single file definition to package up and manage all of your dependencies across your different projects. Now, this is great because you can pin different versions. There's also over ways to override them if you have different projects that require different version numbers. But it is a game changer for me, especially when I'm developing a lot of solutions that have different apps in them, console apps, test applications, back end, front ends, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and check it out. OK, so let's take a look at my application. I actually have two projects over here. We have a little class library. If I open that up, here it is. It's just targeting .NET 8 uses one package, Fluent Validation. And then I have an API over here, uh, which is using Fluent Validation as well. And it's using some different packages from ASP.NET Core, including Swashbuckle and the Open API. So it's nothing too fancy, but you can see that we're going to be able to share code between them. And I might have other projects as well, like a testing project or something like that. So nothing too crazy here. But if we look here, we can note, if I zoom in, that we have, you know, in this case, three or four different NuGet packages that we have to manage. And if we want to bump different version numbers, we're going to have to go in and we can either manually go in and, you know, manage NuGet packages of a single project. We can see what's installed here. We can see if there's updates here. Uh, we can look at the transient packages, for example, as well. Uh, if I go into the solution, I can go and then say manage NuGet packages for the solution. And this would give me a holistic view of all of the different packages that are installed and all of the ones that need to be updated across the board. So here I could say, oh, okay, like actually I need to update this here and install it. And that will go ahead and give me all the dependencies. But if I'm checking this into source code, if I need to bump this, I'm going to have to now bump the different versions here for fluent validation. If 11.7.2 comes out here and here, we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to add a new central package management file. Now, um, what we're going to do is go in, I'm going to say add, I'm going to say add new item to my solution. Uh, so that's one way that you can do it uh, here. And what I'm going to say is for my app, I'm going to go ahead and put directory dot packages dot props. Uh, you can also do the show all project templates based on what version of Visual Studio you might see that or come up. But if you do directory packages, props and that's going to go ahead and be the one that you want now inside of here this file if i go ahead and open up the file explorer is going to be at the root so there we go zoom in here we can see that this directory packages props at the root now you could create this just in the uh, in vs code you could create this and just right here and in, in your file browser anything but directory packages props is what you're going to want to create there now you can have this for your entire solution or for a specific project that can override it. And I'll link to docs to show you more, but I want to show you how to just get up and start it here. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to need to do in this directory packages props is put in a project node. So I'm going to say slash project here. And if for some reason you're not getting IntelliSense, probably just because we created it, you can close it and reopen it and you should be kind of good to go now, which is nice. And then we're going to go ahead and create a property group there. And we can say manage, manage um, package versions centrally and set that to true. There we go. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to tell 
uh, basically the, the build steps and Visual Studio to say, hey, please go ahead and look. And I want this file here to be managing the versions of all of my packages. So since we have our package version centrally turned on, we can now create another item group. And in this case, what we want to do is create package versions definitions. All right. Now, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to go in to um, any of your projects and copy this here. So I'm going to copy out all the package references just like this. Now, this is going to specify the, the versions here, and you can create additional attributes and you can pin them here and a bunch of other things as well. But this is where I'm going to say this is my package versions. Now, note here that this is the package reference, um, and that's not what we want. We want it to be a package version. And this is the new sort of property that we have, a new attribute we can have. And it's exactly the same as package reference, but package version. So you're defining these package versions, right? So you go in, if you have other packages that you're going to add in here, you're going to see them all here, which is really, really nice. So here we're defining that I would like to use fluent validation, package version here, uh, package version here of 650 and this specific RC. I could also, for example, use star notation too. So for example, I'm using RC1 and someone else is using RC2. I could say, hey, use anything 8.0 that's kind of installed on my machine. It'll figure out the right versions. But let's just go ahead and pin it at RC1 since that's what I'm on today. So now if I go in and try to build this project, we're going to actually note that there is a bunch of errors going on here. Uh, and, and it's because uh, if I look, it says projects that use central package version management should not define the version on the package reference. So because we turn on the package version centrally attribute here, we now need to go update our packages here. And what we're going to do is remove the version code. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to use these packages and the versions will be centrally managed from right here. OK, and we can see over here in the package management system, we see the versions update automatically here. If I go and open this code as well, I can then delete that version. So this is nice because in the case where you just have one app or one project, it's not going to make a lot of sense, right? You're basically managing the packages in one uh, project. But when you have multiple projects, we can see now Fluent Validation is using 11.7.1 and 11.7.1, which is really, really nice. So now in this case, we have the versions pinned, our build successful, and all of our packages being referenced here. So that is the features that are built in to .NET 6. Now, one feature, though, that was added even newer in .NET 7, if you're targeting .NET 7 or .NET 8 or beyond, is actually something called a global package reference. And this is something that blew my mind because I often have multiple new packages that are used everywhere. Uh, so instead of just defining the package version, you can define a global package reference. Let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so this is cool. And, and the case that you would want to use a global package reference is when a NuGet package, such as Fluent Validation, is being used everywhere. So instead of defining a package version, we're going to say global package reference. Now, when we do this, we're still going to define our include and our version, but now we can remove that package reference from both of the projects. And I want you to note here that over on the right hand side, that the fluent validation is still being brought in and still being brought in. This here, this mix and match here, we can say these are our globals, here are our package versions, you can put them in separate item groups as well. That's going to enable you to be super productive and managing these as well, which is really, really cool. You can, of course, go in and so manage your NuGet packages and you can see what's updated. So it knows about the directory packages props, right? So you can still do that and you can add new inside of there and you can define where they're going to go based on your properties and your packages. All right, there you have it. This is honestly one of my favorite features. That I didn't even know it existed. And I was looking at some of the different architecture apps that we have and I was like, well, what is this feature? I need it in my life. Now, there's a lot more built into central package management. Uh, you can enable, you can disable transients for specific projects. Uh, you can pin transients. Uh, you can override package versions as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can add into, uh, into this uh, new brand new directory packages props file. 
Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if you're using central package management system, or if this is brand new to, to you, let me know, uh, in the, in the comments below, or if you have any questions about it, uh, definitely I'll add links to documentation and to the blog post for announcing this from a while back. Uh, but it's just something that sometimes there's new features that are added all the time, not even directly into .NET, but into like the new package management system and .NET together. And it just kind of amazes me how well and seamless it helps me manage all of my packages and all my code all together. If you found any value at all, just the tiniest of it, give this a like, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you stay updated on all the videos that I put out here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and have a good one.